if you, uh, you know, ascend to the people's house, I think there are a lot of people who are excited about the prospect on the left um, because they believe, you know, it's an opportunity to grow what's known as the squad um, and to grow the small but, but growing group of people who can be reliably trusted to vote in favor of certain progressive um, issues, whether it be Medicare for all, uh, $15 minimum wage, um, uh, student debt cancellation, um, cash relief for stimulus checks. Um, you know, you know, you know, the, the, the agenda better than I do. Is that a correct assumption? And do you see any kind of points on that progressive agenda sheet or the kind of Bernie agenda sheet that you would be, you anticipate departing from? No, I, I don't. All of those things are important to me. I am going to be there to to be a champion for the people and lay it all out on the line, especially in moments like this. I don't think we can be timid. Austerity is not the key. You know, it's amazing to me that we can have $740 billion for the military industrial complex. And even the bill that, that you know, they came to an agreement on on December the 20th is lacking. It, it leaves people wanting. It's less than what the relief people got in March. It really is a shame that it has taken this long for both Democrats and Republicans. This is just not one political party. It is both political parties and some members, not all, who have a cavalier attitude about the suffering of people. We cannot, we have to, I mean, oh my God, you just really get me revved up here. Morally, it is wrong that it took the Congress and this president this long. Well, what do you think of the um, kind of failure to take seriously the $1.8 trillion deal that was on the table prior to um, the election? You know, the, the the narrative was, you know, we don't want to advantage Donald Trump in any way by letting him send out checks with his name on it. And therefore, we're going to kind of do this gamble. And now that we've seen the results of the gamble, a lot of people are reflecting on that, the, the, the choice. You know, what did you think at the time of the choice not to take take that deal? I think the deal should have been taken. I agree with Congressman Rokana, who was bold enough to say that. And I think there were a few others, but he certainly was out front on that. When you have this level of suffering, you can't play games. And what I would have done had I been leading is to say to President Trump, everybody knows the Democrats don't like President Trump. He, he did things uh, in, in ways that were... I'm trying to stay PG here. He he was he was he was not a good president. So everybody gets that tension, rightful tension between Democrats and Republicans. Today's Republicans got it. Check that off the box. But what you cannot do and should not do is use people in this country as pawns under immense suffering. Now, had this been the 90s and everybody had a job and the unemployment rate was, you know, and you want to hedge a little bit because sometimes in politics, people hedge. But hedging, when you got people being evicted from their homes, hedging, when you got millions of people unemployed, hedging, when folks have lost their employer-based health care, it was unconscionable. And in my mind, because of my background, it was just absolutely immoral. If I were the leader, I'd just make it clear. Look, you know what, President Trump, you we don't vibe. And that's just being kind. I don't like how you've been president. I'm sure you don't like how I'm, I'm leading. But I tell you what, we're going to do this deal for the people. We also going to do the dance because we're going to defeat you. I'm going to make that. That's my priorities to, to defeat you. But for now, let's go on and do this deal for the people of this nation. That's what you do. You don't, you don't do. So it's disgusting that it was done in that way. And look what we end up with. Well, why do you think it was so close to begin with? Because arguably there's a world where Biden's margin was big enough ahead of Trump that, you know, advantaging Trump in some small way would never have been a consideration. We're thinking about it the wrong way. See, if you think about it as given President Donald Trump an advantage, then that's when you, you you dig in your political heels. But if you turn that around and say, I am going to do what is in the best interest of the people of this nation who are suffering the most, then it doesn't, then it doesn't become an issue. From that lens, it's not an issue. And then you double dog dare somebody to get up in your face and ask you, why are you at, at, at giving a President Donald Trump an advantage? You say to them, I'm not giving him an advantage. I'm serving the people. 
Yeah, I do think that there's something to be said for a willingness to reframe issues, right? I think sometimes on the on the left, liberals in general, you know, very smart political brains say, okay, well, the Republicans are going to spin it this way, or corporate Dems are going to spin it this way. And there's never any confidence in the left, the, the progressive's ability to say, okay, well, we're going to spin it this other way, because that's the truth. And to trust the voters' ability to recognize that there's some value in being perceived to be fighting genuinely for the people. I want to ask you to, to, to that end, I'm sure you've, it's not escaped your notice that there's a lot of, um, brouhaha online right now about this question of whether or not um, the small progressive cohort in the House should use its leverage in this moment to try to extract a concession out of Nancy Pelosi. Namely, people are asking for her to uh, bring a Medicare to all for all to a floor vote. There's some other asks that people have brought up that I think are smart. David Sroda, our colleague, has mentioned getting rid of Richard Neal from the Ways and Means Committee, um, getting rid of um, PAYGO, other things that would help to progress and advance a progressive agenda. Um, right now, there hasn't been any buy-in from any progressive members at the House. Um, what's your read on that situation? I don't want to, I'm not there right now, so far be it for me to second guess what decisions are being made, what the Progressive Caucus is talking about, what the squad is talking about. I don't want to necessarily, because I'm not there, I just, I, I'm not going to, uh, I don't want to malign them, I guess. I'm trying to put this in a way that... Sure, but not not a commentary on what their choices were, but can you give some insight into what your thinking would be about this process? Because it seems in a lot of ways that the crucial question is, you know, is there a willingness to go up against your own party's leadership? Is there a willingness to be critical of one's own party's leadership? Someone like Senator Sanders, obviously, as an independent, has kind of set himself apart and made himself very willing to be oppositional at certain points in his career, sometimes more so than other times. But do you see yourself as someone who would be willing to call out leadership and be oppositional in that way, as opposed to kind of putting quote unquote party party first? I've, I've shown myself already <laughs> to be willing to do that. Uh, throughout my career, I've, I've bumped up against the Democratic Party. You know, I bump up against this party because I care. Some people want to question whether I'm a Democrat just because, you know, working with somebody doesn't mean you're going to acquiesce to them. There is a difference. And so the progressives have to set themselves apart. Why are we being called progressives if we're not going to stand up for the people? It's, it's really simple. You know, the quote Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, what the people want is simple. They want an America as good as it's promised. Progressives are standing in that ready position to help to deliver an America as good as it's promised. So whether it's now or soon, and, and that's why I'm trying not to second guess them because I don't know what's going into their thinking. Whether mm. I don't want people to give up on them just because they might not necessarily be answering that call right this minute. There's still time to be to push. Uh, neoliberals and more moderates to do the right thing. And when the Progressive Caucus decides to do that, we we must ready ourselves to know that they, when we when you make a demand, there has to be a consequence to that demand. And I think that's what people out in the in the on the activist side is saying, make the demand and then make sure that there's a consequence for it. I, I will God, I don't even necessarily want to say be patient because, you know, even Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said wait almost means never. It's just I'm trying right. to be strategic in what I'm saying, not in terms of being misinterpreted, but just because I have served inside bodies before. And a lot of times what people think they know, they don't really know. That's why I'm trying to just kind of be a little more open to what may or may not be happening. But there is going to come a point. To answer your question directly, I have proven myself to, to bump against even county reform in Cuyahoga County. I don't even know if you remember that or not, but that was something that the Democratic Party did not support. We had, had corruption in Cuyahoga County at the hands of Democrats. And the people wanted to see something different. And I bumped up against the party. I bumped up against even leaders in the black community on this. And the issue passed. So that is by way of example. I do not shrink from standing up when I think it is right and good, what I think is in the best interest of people. And that will not change uh, if or when. I want to say when, uh, when I get to Congress. But I do want people that just have a, like a little more mercy, not necessarily wait in the sense of you need to wait a long time, 
but just to have a little more patience and let's let's see what's going to happen moving forward. But the reason why we need activists out there is to push elected officials. That that's what we need. We need the grassroots making the making the demand, and that is exactly what people are out there doing. But yes, you got to bump up against. You bump up against leadership, not because you you bump up against because you want something better. Imagine. Let me just give this example. Imagine if 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 black folks, our ancestors, didn't bump up against the damn system, we wouldn't be free. So for people who say go along to get along or stay with the status quo or be patient or wait, no, some things you can't wait for.